Hey pals, welcome back. Now before we jump into this, some concerns from a couple of viewers about the uh, fidelity and quality of my microphone. And uh, they're not happy with the high treble hiss one can hear in, in videos such as these. I think those individuals might be confusing this channel with a, a professional YouTube channel with paid sponsorships and unlimited resources to run out and buy a $350 shotgun microphone for the ultimate audiophile experience. That's not what this channel is. Uh, I'm just doing this for fun. This is the uh, gaming headset I've had for about 12 years now. I, it's a miracle the thing still works. I can't even find the dongle for it. And not that I would have any open ports for dongle. This is uh, plugged directly into the analog jack on this gaming la laptop and it's a, it's a miracle. Uh, that it even works and it's either this solution or the the microphone built into the laptop and that's the the, the high pitch hiss is even worse on that so you don't want that uh, it's not going to get any better I'm not going to run out and buy an expensive he gaming headset just for this uh, YouTube channel that I do for free for myself uh, in my spare time so if you're not satisfied with the audio quality there are literally hundreds of other uh, YouTube channels out there talking about second edition Dungeons and Dragons at this time. I suggest you uh, check one of those guys out if, if 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 you can't stand the audio quality of this. Okay, now for everyone else that doesn't have a problem with that, let's move ahead in our overview of the second edition uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, tabletop role playing game. Okay, and this time we'll be looking at Dragonlance, a uh, specific campaign setting. Now. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in this setting, but I've read a lot of the novels. That uh, actually, uh, uh, the uh, novel series um, revolve around the characters you see. Let me see if I can blow this up. Uh, pop out. Yeah, revolve around these particular characters you see on this um, uh, book cover for this box set, Tales of the Lance, uh, was uh, what I consider to be uh, the primary. Uh, box set for the Dragonlance setting in 2nd edition. Now there were others. There were certainly others. Uh, this product line was not as ex expansive as Forgotten Realms. Um, but it was very popular. I would say the novels were more popular than the, uh, the campaign setting. I really would. And uh, this, this guy in particular, this uh, wizard or mage, uh, Raceland, his uh, eyes are, the pupils in his eyes are shaped like hourglasses. That's the one thing I remember about him from the, from the novels. Um, uh, a husband and wife wrote the, the novel series, and subsequently they had a hand in the, uh, uh, the, the creation of this particular uh, campaign setting. The War of the Lance is what this uh, whole setting revolves around. It is epic. It's expansive. Uh, the world is called Kryn, K R Y double. In, and we'll jump into this and this is just one of the many products available of course I didn't download any of the uh, uh, or upload any of the novels to uh, tabletop simulator here excellent artwork throughout these and uh, uh, lots of new uh, races that you can play well not lots but several new races you can play in the Dragonlance uh, setting and so I think the Hickman's uh, would be mentioned in this. One would think. Uh, Col there's Colin McCombs' name. I recognize that one. Uh, but again, so it, it feels to me like the novels were a lot more popular than this particular campaign setting. Of course, Dragonlance is still a part of Dungeons and Dragons today. I'm almost 100% sure about that. I think the world of Kryn is still an a part of 6th or 5th edition, whatever it is now, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So, now, look through some of this. I'll say, so you've got, all, you know, a lot of history here. And uh, this, this particular setting does have a very rich history. And of course, dragons play an integral part in, in Dragonlands, obviously. Okay? They got all these different wars, and I like these. It's like you're reading a history book. I really dig this. You know, I wish I had time to sit here and just read it out loud. My voice would never uh, take that, though. And as I recall, 
yeah let me just get through the this section here with all the different history uh, Kryn the Dragonlance setting is the home of the Kinder which is an offshoot of the halfling race I think you would also find tinker gnomes here in this setting and minotaur player characters and there is Lord Soth. Now, we'll see him again when we look at the Ravenloft campaign setting because this guy was so evil, his entire kingdom uh, was, I think it was his kingdom, uh, Scythicus, or am I thinking of World of Warcraft? I could have that wrong. It's been a long time, Chappie. Uh, he was sucked into the Demiplane of Dread. He was so evil. He and his undead hordes. And so now he's located in... Uh, the ethereal plane, this particular demi plane inside the ethereal plane where Ravenloft is located. I think he's a, a death knight, which if you played World of Warcraft, that concept is familiar to you. And if you played EverQuest, the Shadow Knight, very similar, that concept is uh, familiar to you. Now, Ancelon is a particular continent on the world of Kryn, and that's where most of the action happens, sort of like um, how Faerun is the primary continent uh, in Forgotten Realms, okay? Or Cerulea in Birthright, etc. And there is a superb map. Uh, it's too bad we can't flip it on its side. I don't think there is a way to flip the uh, image here. And if there is, let's see. No, I can't right click on this. Uh, there probably is a way to do so. I mean, even if we turn the book sideways on the table, which, you know, we could do, but uh, that would be easier, actually. Is it? Just hover and go F. Nope. That just. Hmm. There is a way to. I think it's. There we go. Am I right side up or upside down? I think that's it. There we go. You can kind of sort of see uh, the uh, continent that we're talking about here. Uh, well mapped out and see, but now we got to go right back to this. Well mapped out, just like Forgotten Realms. Just not as much content available for Dragonland. At least between 89 and, say, 2000, whenever the third edition was launched. Okay. This even tells you about the prevailing winds and the weather patterns. I dig it. I love it when it gets into that sort of detail. So you always know whether the weather is coming from the west, uh, from the, the southwest to the northeast, kind of the way it does in the, the U.S., except you know, for the past couple of months, it's been coming from the south. Uh, but uh, I, I dig that. I think it's really cool. Um, okay. Now we uh, zoom in on the... Uh, Geography, love that. I always love that. We get to look at some of these different lands. Ah, ah. You just heard my headphones telling me to push a button. And that, that's another reason I'm not too stressed out about the audio quality here, pals. I mean, if, if I don't push that button, within a lot of time, the headphones turn off anyway. Now, it won't happen again, but again, this is old set, of, old headset. So... You know, we're just going to have to deal with the audio quality. I, I, I have too many other things I need to purchase before I purchase a new pair of headphones, okay? With a, with a microphone attached. Okay. Uh, there's the Dragon Isles. And we'll uh, push through this. And then we'll get to start talking about some of the races and classes, I'm sure. Too bad I can't make this full screen and just scroll down like if it were a PDF file. Okay. Now that's a picture that also appears in, I think, the Dungeon Master's Guide. It might be in the Player's Handbook, but I believe it's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, terrific artwork there. Here we go. So you've got the Barbarians, which is one of the many races in this particular uh, campaign setting. Look at all these different uh, uh, implements. There's a crude crossbow up there. Um, oh, it's an ice crossbow. Cool. Bear claws. like a bill hook but it's not 
I was a gas hook. There's some bolas. Uh, that bolas I don't think are included. Well, they actually might be now that I think about it. Bolas are, are quite handy, believe it or not. Uh, just as Batman, he uses bolas. Bolas are great for if you. If, again, there's. There was a time when uh, the goal wasn't to kill all your adversaries, but to simply to subdue them, and perhaps capture them. And bolas were handy for that. There we go. Uh, of course, you have dwarves, and you have all these different tribes, like the gully dwarves, and now we get to the elves, and is this, yeah, they call themselves uh, the Nesty uh, on this particular world. You have the Sylvanesti, the Qualanesti, the Kaganesti, and the Darganesti. And then you have half elves, obviously. These all correspond roughly with the high elves, the gray elves, the Sylvan elves, and I think the aquatic elves, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, the Daganesti, or the Darganesti, or the sea elf. Okay. And then we have gnomes. With their character. Uh oh, and here we have the blunderbuss in um, this campaign setting. Gunpowder opens a big can of worms in Dungeons and Dragons. You cease. It ceases to be pure fantasy once you uh, introduce the, uh, the gunpowder. Now, World of Warcraft would disagree. Um, but you're, you're getting into late Renaissance culture when you've got arquebuses and blunderbusses. You're just a shade away from musketeers um, once you do that, and that's another can of worms. Now we get to the uh, Kender, which is this world's version of halflings. They're still diminutive, uh, but uh, they are different than the, uh, the, the Tolkien version of halflings. And a lot of people don't like the Kender. Uh, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons players do not like the Kinder. You would have to ask those individuals why they don't. And here we go, the Minotaurs. This is a, uh, up till now, this is a, a race that's been limited to just an adversary that you would find in the Monstrous ma Compendiums or the Monstrous Manual. Uh, but uh, the Minotaurs are uh, a race one can play in the Dragonlance setting. Now, you played a video game called Dark Age of Camelot in the later days, um, post Atlantis, uh, they added Minotaurs as a race, and you could play Maulers and some other classes. And if you were a fan of Dragonlance, that was a, a welcome addition to Dark Age of Camelot. All right, some neat weapons, tridents. Uh, some, I don't know if those are pole arms. Yep, that's exactly what they are. Okay, and that's a Qatar right there. I recognize that from uh, EverQuest. Playing a Beast Lord. Okay. Ogres. Uh, now I'm not certain those are playable, but maybe it'll tell us here in a moment. Yes, you can also play ogres in Dragonlance. Cool. And now as far as character classes... Well, you've got paladins, but you also have these Knights of Salamnia, or the Salamnic Knights. And, uh, you know, you got dragon riders, obviously, in, in the Dragonlance setting as well. Now, wizards, we have wizards of high sorcery, and then we have mages, which are not aligned to this um, particular faction. Now, with priests, you've got, uh, well, the heathen priests, that would include druids, uh, although I don't think druids are specifically native to Kryn, uh, but the holy orders of the stars here and yeah, there are deities in this particular setting, quite a few of them as well. I think all the races have their own deities in Dragonlance. You got rangers, I think I already said that. You also have barbarians and cavaliers. Now, if 
you remember watching the uh, Dungeons and Dragons animated cartoon back in the early 80s, you remember one of those dudes was a cavalier. It sort of got pigeonholed into the uh, paladin class, I think. If not the paladins, then the, the fighter class as a kit in second edition. I think cavaliers were a class in first edition, but I have to go back and check that. Uh, but you've got Cavaliers in, in Dragonlance. You also have Mariners. Of course, that's pretty self-explanatory what a Mariner is. Um, and as far as rogues, thieves and bards, okay? And... Uh, dang, I can't see that word. I can't see what the these... you got the Tinkers and the Commoners. And does that say Handlers? I can't read that. But that's a Kinder in that uh, particular description my you can't see it but my uh, recording software ca timer is right here along with the buttons for stop and microphone there okay all right moving on um, some good information about knights in here a sword knight uh, tables for gameplay here for different experience values for the Sword Knights. And uh, now we get some more in-depth look at here at the Barbarians. And remember, um, again, the Barbarian was uh, one of the kids in uh, Dungeons and Dragons was a Barbarian. You know, the kid with the wearing the Viking helmet with the club. Um, I think they all made an appearance in that newest Dungeons and Dragons film, and I think uh, fanboys went nuts for that. So let's look. Let's look at the Cavaliers here. Uh, weapon proficiencies required: lance, any sword, any. Recommended all other lances and swords. Horsemen's weapons. Okay. Non-weapon proficiencies: bonus, land-based riding, etiquette. Recommended animal handling, animal training, dancing. Heraldry, musical instrument, reading, writing, blind fighting, and endurance. Equipment. A cavalier starts his career with at least two weapons, including one lance and one sword, and must buy the most expensive set of armor he can afford, unless his social rank allows him armor. See the end of this chapter, okay? Cavaliers begin play with a free horse, a light, medium, or heavy war horse, subject to dungeon master approval. I would probably, I would probably opt for a medium. Uh, rather than a heavy. Um, I guess it really depends on uh, whether we're doing dungeon crawling or whether it's going to be um, uh, a lot of tournament jousting and stuff. Because I prefer a medium horse in tournaments than, than a heavy. Um, the case could be made for a light horse too. Okay. And if you have long stretches of places to travel for. A light horse is usually faster. Okay. Uh, special benefits. At first level, a cavalier gets a plus one bonus to hit when on horseback and using a lance. That's cool. Okay. Ooh, and that increases plus one for every six levels. All right. At third level, he gains a plus one to hit with any one type of sword. Okay, so a proficient at combat, certainly. At fifth level, he gains a plus one to hit with a pick, mace, or flail. Oh, okay, a horseman's pick, a horseman's mace, or a horseman's flail. This increases plus one for every six levels. Immune to all fear, fear spells. How about that? Due to bravery, a cavalier inspires confidence in the others and bolsters their courage, which is ironic because the, the cavalier in that Dungeons & Dragons cartoon was the biggest coward of all time. Um, oh, he, he didn't even have a weapon. He just had a shield. Of course, it was a magical shield. Plus four saving throw bonus versus all magic. That affects the mind, such as charm. And it's immune to fear. That's better than uh, the elven and half-elven uh, innate abilities. Okay. Plus three reaction bonus from anyone of his own culture, except evil persons and criminals. And uh, hindrances cannot attack an opponent from a distance if he can instead charge ahead and attack in melee or jousting combat. So that's what you're dealing with here. Now the Cavalier makes another appearance in, I think, the, I think it's the Bards. No, it's not. There's a Bard kit called the Gallant that's going to be a lot like this, but instead of the Warrior hit dice, it's going to have the Rogue hit dice, unless I'm mistaken. Well, you'd have to go look at that resource. Uh, but that's a fun a kit to play. It's just a, a roaming jouster that also writes poems and, you know, plays music. 
All right, now the Mariners, we won't get into all this, but um, wizard group classes, the Wizards of High Sorcery. Ah, uh, their power waxes and wanes with the phases of the moon. That's really cool, Chappies. Uh, again, that's every, every campaign setting has its own special rules, and we're getting into some of those here. Okay. Look, check this out. Wizards of the White Robe, Wizards of the Red Robes, Wizards of the Black Robes. Uh, I think this predates, this might predate Final Fantasy, in which you have White Mages, Black Mages, and Red Mages. How about that? Um, okay, and the Renegade Wizards, or Mages. Now, the Priests, you have the, uh, the Order of Good. Order of Evil and the Order of Neutrality. Um, and the heathen priests, that would be, well, druids would certainly be heathen priests. Um, but as I recall, you just don't find druids here now. I could be mistaken. And subsequent uh, modules may uh, change that. But look, let's just read that. Priests who come from other worlds are those who worship false gods or heathen priests, neither have true supernatural power. Priests from other worlds lose their powers and spit. Yeah, yeah, and that chappies may be one of the reasons that our dungeon master. Since you know a lot of us played casters, I played a druid. One of my friends was a a, um, a summoner, and it took me a minute. I was trying to call him a conjurer. Well, he technically is a conjurer, but it would be a summoner. And another was a paladin, a high level paladin. So. <laughs> Uh, without being able to cast spells, maybe that's why we didn't spend a lot of time here in the Dragonlance setting. Uh, yeah, it is Handlers. That's a specific type of uh, rogue in Dragonlance. Okay, And the Tinkers, they, they build stuff. Tinkers build stuff. And you see that a lot in gnomes uh, building uh, mech stuff, like high-tech stuff, sort of like the dwarves in Skyrim. You see that a lot with, with gnomes in, in fantasy video games and, indeed, role-playing games. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay, now, you notice, or you will notice when we get to the uh, character record sheets, and we are going to roll up a warrior or a fighter at some point just to, to go through that process. There's entries for social status. Um, well... I thought that came from Kara Tour, which is actually a first edition Dungeons and Dragons deal. So it's a, clearly here it is. It's from a Dragon Lance. So you've got slave, peasant, trader, uh, martial, middle class, upper, upper class, created nobility, inherited nobility, displaced royalty, and royalty. And that's going to affect uh, reaction adjustments, obviously, uh, for, and uh, which it's tied into your charisma scores. And, uh, oh, nice picture there. So I believe that's just another picture in the book there. That's cool, that ship. And it looks like the drowned souls in the water and this dragon overhead. That's cool. Okay. Now, um, anyone who read these Dragonlance novels will probably recognize some of these names, if you can see them. I'm having to strain just to read this. Um... The only one I can remember off the top of my head is Raceland. And I might even have that wrong, but I, I'm pretty close, I think. Uh, if I recognize a name here, I'll, I'll let you know. It's probably been, what, 25 to 30 years since I read those books? Well, let's see, it would have been... Hey... Early 90s. So. Yeah, about 30 years. They were bad. I feel like the Dragonlance novels were better than the Forgotten Realms novels. As I recall. Ooh, the Draconians, yeah. That's, that's a, another race you find on uh, the Dragonlance world. Kryn. Lord Soth, the, the Knight of the Black Rose, Death Knight. 
and, and yeah, he, I don't know if he's the main baddie, but this one ends up at another campaign setting, Ravenloft. Uh, now here are the deities. We won't get into those in any uh, great depth. Paladin, that's a that's a name one hears a lot. Neat picture, but I, I swear I think these pictures are all coming from the, if not the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook, then maybe the Tome of Magic and and, and stuff like that. Habakkuk. That's actually ter uh, terrestrial, isn't it? That name, Habakkuk. Hidukil. I think that's also... Uh, that, that sounds Babylonian or, or Mesopotamian. Hidukil. All right. Let's move on. So let's talk about some of the different uh, monsters and creatures you can find in, in Dragonlance. You've got centaurs, griffins, the naga, which are snakes with... You know, they're supposed to have vaguely uh, female heads, but... Um, this just says humanoid heads. The pegasus, satyrs, the draconians... Which are sort of like dragon men, not half dragons. Uh, not uh, you know what? These may be like the the dragon kind that you can find in modern Dungeons and Dragons. And then we have the actual uh, dragons. And these pictures you see here are the same pictures that are in the monstrous compendium entries for all these dragons, whereas they have uh, full color artwork in the monstrous manual. Okay. So we're just dealing, I think, with chromatic and um, metal, metallic dragons. I don't think there are any gem dragons in Kryn. Uh, this also includes the sea dragons. Yeah, you've got the goblins, which might also include the, the uh, hobgoblins and the bugbears. Oh, that's cool. It shows you the different uh, weapons that they might wield. The Lost Folk uh, Bakali. Looks like a sort of looks like an Ixar. The Holder Folk. I mean, that, that straight up looks like a Martian, doesn't it? And uh, Kyrie, so they're flyers. And shadow people. All right, let's proceed on. We're almost half an hour into this, and we're not even halfway through this. Um, a lot of this stuff you can find in the Monstrous Manual, by the way. Ah, some new uh, magical items, endemic. To Dragonlance or Kryn, but I mean, uh, you're encouraged in Second Edition to just take this stuff and put it in your own campaign setting. Change the names, change the locations a little bit, make it work for what you're doing. All right. And again, this is just one of the many box sets and adventure modules and source books available for uh, Dragonlands. Now, this says this comes with cards. Let me... well, no, I can't scroll out. I'll lose my spot in here. Uh, we've got some cards on the table. The Talus cards. We'll check those out, I think. That's what these are. Ah, and we've got a key here for uh, a map which may m might be a poster that we see at the end here. Okay. Here 
There we go. That's the end. There's Lord Soth. Pretty famous picture of him right there. And so he is a death knight, and he's wielding a firebrand. And so he's got undead minions on horseback with him there. Okay. Ah. So these, I think, are your your guys in the uh, the novels. I'm almost positive of that. Gold Moon, yeah. River Wind, yeah. I recognize all these names. And uh, well, all the names I can see that aren't blocked by my timer up here. We're just gonna have to look at this sideways, Chappie. Excellent f painting right there. Excellent painting. Okay, so maybe this is the Talus deck. It's sort of supposed to look like a tarot deck. I bet you punch those out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and they've got Celtic knot artwork on the back of them there. A lot of these campaign settings come with stuff like this. The Birthright setting, which I can't wait to get to. I know a lot more about Birthright than I do Dragonlance. Uh, it comes with a card game. Uh, it's sort of a rudimentary version of Magic the Gathering. That's how I could best describe it. Of course, TSR had its own answer to Magic the Gathering, which was called Spellfire. It actually had another one, too, called Blood Wars, but that was uh, Planescape-themed rather than uh, Spellfire, which was everything else. Okay. Now, oh, and I love this stuff right here. Um... If you punch these out, and this, I don't know if this came with bases to stick them in or not, you might have just made a little teepee out of them. And you can use these in lieu of those uh, now expensive 25mm uh, tw uh, 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 pewter, not pewter, and not lead. They were just very soft metal miniatures. Relidium, they called it, because Ralph Partha made most of these. But... Um, these worked just as well just so you could put these down on your maps and say okay this is where your character is standing this is where the uh, enemy is standing and and we'll figure out range for bows and arrows and spell casting from there you don't have to do that but it's cool that, that this comes with this here's some more of these cards uh, these are variable who's who in uh, this campaign setting. I did not see Raceland. Sturm Brightblade, that's a... That, there he is, there's Raceland right there, it has to be. Um, yep. And, yeah, he is a wizard. Uh, this only has him as a third level uh, wizard. Seemed to be a lot more powerful than that in the books, it has to be said. There's the other half of that picture of Lord Soth. Or at least more of that picture. It's the same picture there. Okay. And now some of the cardboard. What is with that Kinder's head floating there? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is probably the Dungeon Master's screen for this particular accessory. Now we're getting into the maps. And boy, those are some very detailed maps with the topography on them, aren't they? And we'll just continue on down here. I love blueprints of castles. I absolutely love castle blueprints. It's cool. Even though you're mainly just dealing with levels of curtain walls, I still think they're awesome. Uh, very detailed dungeon map. Well, it's a temple. And, uh, wow. All those little hex, you know, the graph paper beneath them there lets you measure distance. Ah, we've got a blueprint of a ship. The, the Paracon. That rings a bell. And now we... Oh, now you'll notice the big hexagonal grid all over these maps. That's, that's how they did this. Uh, they broke things down into hexes. Maps. Love maps. And I wish I had the full color map to just spread out and and try to just scroll across, but we can't do that here. Varied terrain, you've got forests, you've got deserts, you've got water, you've got rolling hills, you've got farmlands, you've got it all. 
and down down there you've got uh, Arctic plains or sub or yeah sub Arctic no it's Arctic whether it's north or south so now these tie into uh, some of the there's a, a church or a cathedral blueprint love it love this kind of stuff um, look at this you can cut stuff out and make little houses it looks like there and that's for the folks that like the tabletop war gaming again in second edition Dungeons and Dragons you did not have to uh, have that stuff you can just a piece of paper uh, that you could sketch out the terrain with little X's that you could you know, erase with a, or a dry erase board or something like that. That's really all you needed. Or you could just do it all in your head. You did not have to have those expensive miniatures for 2nd edition. 5th and 6th edition, it seems to be a hard requirement. Um, that's just one of the many reasons I'm, not, I'm totally not interested in the new editions of Dungeons & Dragons. Nice presentation on the back there, though, and you can see the, the benefit of those little uh, cardboard tokens. And, uh, yeah, this one was only 20 bucks back in 91 or 92 or whenever this came out. I don't see a copyright date on the back of this. But I can sort of tell from the artwork this wasn't mid-90s. It had to have been early 90s. Not the artwork, but the the typeset, the font used in this. Well, there you go, chappies. That's a very, very brief overview of uh, the Dragonlance uh, campaign setting. Really, the, uh, the biggest takeaways are, are the novel series, the uh, companion novel series, which, uh, frankly, I think was probably more popular than this particular setting. Uh, here, we don't have to do this. Boom. Page one. Uh, you, you had things like the Kinder and the Minotaur, uh, which was appealing to a lot of people, and it also has to be said the Kinder was not appealing to a lot of people. But uh, there's nothing wrong with Dragonlance, and it's still popular today. And it's frankly, it's a little more high fantasy than something like Birthright, which is more. Well, Birthright is slightly more grounded in, in what we would consider. But Birthright is more like Game of Thrones, whereas this Dragonlance is more like. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, we'll put it that way. And Forgotten Realms is more like the Lord of the Rings. I guess we could we could put it that way. Um, yeah, I stand behind that. I feel like Dragonlance is 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 higher fantasy than than slightly higher fantasy than than Forgotten Realms, and certainly more higher fantasy than um, uh, Birthright. Man, I'd say about the same as Greyhawk. Honestly, I'd say Greyhawk and and Dragonlance are... <laughs> it's subjective, isn't it? Because Forgotten Realms, there's plenty of magic in Forgotten Realms, but... Um, they all have rich histories, and uh, some are more popular than others today. I don't know if anyone's playing Birthright in modern Dungeons & Dragons or not. They, they should be, because it's it's veritably Game of Thrones, and we'll, we'll get to that one. We'll talk about that one. I can, that one will be a much longer installment I think because I spent a lot of time on Cerulea and not so much time on Kryn. But let's X out of this the next time well oh, we'll have a look at Spelljammer next time. Now Spelljammer is weird okay. Spelljammer is, is practically science fiction in Dungeons and Dragons and so uh, uh, we'll have some fun with that okay. Well those of you that can tolerate the uh, uh, well, first of all, my voice, because I mean, I'm keenly aware that my voice will put anyone to sleep, including myself. But those that can tolerate the fidelity of the uh, recording here and that made it this far, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.